very warm welcome and good morning to each one of you it's a joy to be with you in this beautiful lake shrine temple and to see your smiling faces let us begin our service with a prayer please fold your hands close your eyes take your attention within and with all the devotion of our hearts let us pray together heavenly father, heavenly father. mother Friend, Friend, beloved God, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ. Bhagavan Krishna, Krishna. Mahavatar Babaji, Baba Lahiri Mahashay, Swami Sri Yukteswar, and our Guru, Guru. Paramahansa Yogananda, Paramahansa. Saints of all religions, of all religions. we bow to you all. Beloved God, help us to find Thy presence in our stillness within. Open our hearts and minds that we may be receptive to the full inflow of Your love and blessings. May our hearts daily become more pure by all surrendering love for you. Om. Peace. Amen. A special welcome to those of you who are here for the first time. We always begin our services in Self-Realization Fellowship with a period of devotional chanting and silent meditation. And the purpose of meditation is to calm the body, to calm the mind, so that we can turn our attention within and experience the peace of our souls. And as we become more peaceful, we get more identified with our true nature, as a soul, as a spark of the infinite. We will begin with a period of devotional chanting, followed by a few minutes, about 10 minutes or so of silent meditation. When we chant, close your eyes, feel the meaning behind the words of the chant, Sing with devotion, taking the attention within. If distracting thoughts arise in the mind to take us away from the meaning of the chant, just use your willpower to bring your mind back to the chant. And the more we can bring the mind back to what we are doing in the present, the more we will start feeling that peace within. And gradually that peace deepens into a feeling of great joy and contentment with time. In the period of silence after the chant, if you know techniques of meditation, please practice them. If you do not know any technique, just keep your eyes closed, gently lifted, with the attention focused at the point between the eyebrows, the seat of willpower and concentration in the body. And then you can talk to the Divine in the language of your heart. Our chant is, From this sleep, Lord, will you wake, wake me? From this dream, Lord, will you wake, wake me? In thee I dive, in thee I rise, in thy sea, in thy sea. In thee I am born, in thee I die, to live forever in thy sea, in thee.
from this sleep lord will you wake wake me from this dream lord will you wake wake me in the i dive in the i rise in the i dive in the i rise in thy seen in thee in thy seen in thee from this sleep lord will you wake wake me from this dream lord will you wake wake me in the i am born in the i die in the i am born in the i die to live forever in in the to live forever in in the from this sleep lord will you wake wake me from this dream lord will you wake wake me in the i dive in the i rise in the i dive in the i rise in thy seen in the in thy seen in the from this sleep lord will you wake wake me from this dream lord will you wake wake me in the i am born in the i die in the i am born in the i die to live forever in in the to live forever in in the from this sleep lord will you wake wake me from this dream lord will you wake wake me in the i am born in the i die in the i am born in the i die to live forever in in the to live forever in in the from this sleep lord will you wake wake me from this dream lord will you wake wake me in the i dive in the i rise in the i dive in the i rise in thy seen in the in thy seen in the from this sleep lord will you wake wake me from this dream lord will you wake wake me in the i am born in the i die in the i am born in the i die to live forever in in the to live forever in sleep lord will you wake wake me from this dream lord will you wake wake me from this sleep lord will you wake wake me from this dream lord will you wake wake me
Well, good morning everyone once again. It's my special joy to be here with you today in this beautiful sanctuary. Even before I became a monk, I always had very pleasant experiences meditating here, walking these very beautiful and sacred grounds at Lake Shrine, which our Guru Paramahansa Yogananda sanctified with his physical presence as well as his deeply spiritual vibrations. So it is really a blessing for me and I mean that to be with you all this morning. Our topic for today is giving thanks for life's blessings. It's a beautiful subject. And I think we, being on the spiritual path, or at least being interested in the spiritual path, can recognize that this is a very important topic, being grateful of uh, the quality of being appreciative of what life gives us. And there are many good reasons that we will get into in the service today on why this is a good quality to cultivate, to practice. But before we jump into the subject, I actually wanted to ask you a little bit of a provocative question, which is, have you at any point in your life felt that things were going so bad that it was just challenge after challenge and you felt like there was nothing really to be thankful for in your life? Have you ever felt that? And that's, it's okay to feel that way. I too have felt that from time to time. Well, someone wise has said that there's always something to be thankful for in your life. For example, if you're, if you're not able to pay your debts, you can be thankful that you're not one of your creditors. <laughs> so you see, it's all about attitude and perspective, right? We can always, it's true, we can always find something to be grateful for. And sometimes it's so easy to take, take things for granted and not really focus on all the positive things that are going on in life. And I think we all recognize also that having a grateful heart is a very deeply spiritual quality. Do you know of anyone who is a deeply spiritual person, but not a grateful person? It's not possible, right? Because spirituality brings with it gratitude, a sense of awe for the divine and how much we owe our lives to, to the divine spirit. So how do we cultivate gratitude and why is it important? And I think I like to take a look at the bigger picture and try to understand where the spirit of gratitude, this wanting to give thanks for life's blessings, fits into the larger spiritual journey that many of us are on. So we have to ask a very fundamental question. What is the purpose of life? Why are we here? Why do we exist? Now our Guru Paramahansa Yogananda, as have many, many great spiritual masters over the ages, have told us very clearly that there is one purpose in life, ultimate purpose, which is to realize our innate divinity. To realize our oneness with God or spirit, as ever-existing, ever-conscious, ever-new bliss. And there is a word in Sanskrit for that called Satchitanand. Satchitanand means ever-existing, ever-conscious, ever-new bliss. And when we attain that state of realization, we will be in that blissful consciousness eternally, unconditionally. When we, ha when we have that self-realization, we will be able to function in this world, to be fully engaged in our roles and responsibilities, it doesn't make us any less engaged or make us any indifferent to the heartaches, the, the pains in the world. But yet, at some level, we can remain very detached and never lose our inner connection with the divine. It's a very beautiful state of consciousness that we are aspiring toward. And don't we all want that? To be able to live in this world as divine beings. That's our goal. Now, once we have established that goal very clearly in our minds, once we are sold that that is our purpose in life, then 
it stands to reason that we then need to focus all our energies and attention behind that singular purpose, isn't it? Think of an Olympic athlete, right? They are focused on winning a medal. And they sacrifice many distractions that may have existed in their lives, and they focus all their energies behind winning that medal. Right? So we too, we have a much higher purpose, the ultimate purpose to achieve our oneness with the divine. And so how much more we need to be able to focus behind that goal. Right? Now the second thing is, we also need to be able to cultivate qualities, spiritual qualities of the heart that will help us achieve that goal of self-realization. Qualities such as fearlessness, courage, faith, devotion, humility, attunement with the divine, and so forth. Now the key point is this. When we cultivate a grateful heart, we in turn automatically help to develop these other spiritual qualities of humility, of devotion, of attunement. It's like a catalyst. When we cultivate gratitude, we help cultivate some of these other qualities that we're seeking. Now, I'll, I'll share a little personal story to illustrate this point. Many years ago, as a young student on this path, I was practicing my meditations regularly, following all the teachings of our Guru. And yet I was experiencing a dryness. I felt like I had lost my inner connection with God and with our Gurus. And nothing seemed to be able to help me. I was just going through this dry phase. And around the same time, it so happened that there was a monastic tour organized to the city I was living in. And it was a long weekend program, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We had classes and technique reviews and group meditations. It was a very beautiful event, and I was able to attend all the programs that weekend. And in one particular class, the monk that was leading the class made a statement which really hit home. And he said, cultivating gratitude is a very powerful way to cultivate devotion. And I went home and I thought about it, and I tried to put it into practice. And lo and behold, within a very short time, the devotion that I felt was lost came back. Through practice of gratitude, through thinking of things in my life that I perhaps had been taking for granted until that point in time. And through that expressing of appreciation in my heart, I was able to awaken that inner relationship again with God and Gurus. I have never forgotten that, even to this day when I go through dry spells in my sadhana, in my spiritual practice, I try to recall all the things I am grateful for. And every single time it works, that devotion and that attunement comes back. Now, God does not need our gratitude in that sense that God is all-sufficient, God is content, God is bliss. He doesn't need us to express our gratitude to make him any more than he already is, he or she already is. But when we give our thanks, it is to our own benefit, because what happens is we open up the channel of our lives to receive God's bounty of blessings and grace. Let me read a little quote from our Guru Paramahansa Yogananda that, that illustrates this. He said, Every day should be a day of thanksgiving for the gifts of life, sunshine, water, and the luscious fruits and greens that are indirect gifts of the great giver. God makes us work so that we may deserve to receive his gifts. The all-sufficient one does not need our thanks, however heartfelt. But when we are grateful to him, our attention is concentrated for our highest benefit upon the great source of all supply. So it is for our benefit that we want to be grateful. 
And like uh, I mentioned at the beginning, it's very, the spirit of gratitude and thankfulness is very intimately interwoven with the spiritual life. Even in the highest states of spiritual consciousness, one never loses this feeling of gratitude. And I would like to read to you a short excerpt from the booklet, Forerunner of a New Race, that we publish. It's by a great direct disciple of our Guru, Paramahansa Yogananda. Her name was Tara Mata. And she wrote this booklet. Not long after she met our Guru in San Francisco in 1924, she wrote this article about a man who was blessed with this experience of cosmic consciousness. Now, in her humility, she did not identify this with this person that she was writing about, but in reality, she was actually writing about herself. She was writing in third person as this man, and she writes, I'm just reading a, a short excerpt. In the midst of his work, he would suddenly be freshly overwhelmed by the goodness of God, who had given him this incredible, unspeakable happiness. His breath would stop completely at such times. The awe which he felt would be accompanied by an absolute stillness within and without. Underlying all his consciousness was a sense of immeasurable and unutterable gratitude. A longing for others to know the joy which lay within them. But most of all, a divine knowledge past all human comprehension. That all was well with the world. That everything was leading to the goal of cosmic consciousness, immortal bliss. The key statement here is, underlying all his consciousness was a sense of immeasurable and unutterable gratitude. So imagine, even in that highest state of cosmic consciousness, she was experiencing that sense of immense, immense gratitude that God had blessed her with this experience. Some time ago, a senior monk at the Mother Center shared a story with me. Many years ago, um, he was working in our beloved former president, Sri Dayamata's office. And she gave him a little project to work upon. I believe it was to frame some artwork. And so he took the piece of art from her and he really thought deeply about this and put his heart and soul into it and finished the project. When he informed her about it, she called him up to her office on the third floor in the main building at the Mother Center. He ran up the stairs, sat across the desk from her and gave her the frame. And she examined the frame and she loved it. And she said, oh, this is so beautiful. What a wonderful work you've done. I can really see you have put your heart into this work. I'm so grateful. I can't thank you enough. And she went on and on expressing her appreciation to him like that. And after some time, she just paused. And she looked at him and she said, you know, when I was praising you, when I was expressing my appreciation to you, what were you feeling? What were you thinking? And he said, Ma, I was feeling such love for you. I wanted to do more. What more can I do for you? Can you tell me? What else do you need? How can I help you? And she paused and she said, looked into him, into his eye, and she said, that is exactly how God feels for you when you express appreciation. It's profound. Think about it. When we express our heartfelt gratitude to God, God says, Oh, what more can I do for this child? Dayama said that appreciation opens the heart to the abundance of God's love in its many expressions. Now, it is not that God is partial to those who express gratitude to Him. Right? God is unconditional love irrespective of our state of spiritual evolution. God's love is unconditional, eternal. And he doesn't say he or she or spirit, whatever we want to call, doesn't say that, oh, this 
person is grat expressing gratitude, so I'm going to do more, or I love him more, or her more, and this other person doesn't express gratitude, so I'm going to ignore. No, it doesn't work that way, right? God's blessings are just f flowing all the time in abundance, like the sunshine. And our guru often used to use this analogy of the charcoal and the diamond. At the heart, charcoal and diamond are composed of the same fundamental substance, carbon, right? But they exhibit totally different properties. When you place a piece of charcoal and diamond in the sunlight, the sunlight is falling equally upon both of those. The diamond reflects all the light. The charcoal doesn't reflect anything, right? Now, that is not the fault of the sunshine. The sunshine is falling equally. So similarly, the grace and blessings of God are falling equally on everyone, on all of creation. It depends on us whether we are like the diamond or the charcoal. Right? Now what prevents us from receiving God's blessings or being open to those blessings? It is our ego, our vanity, our pride, and all the other not so appreciable qualities that we may possess, perhaps. Think of it like a channel. The channel is, God de designed this channel of human life to be open to receive his blessings, right? But through bad habits, through our ego, pride, vanity, all of these dark qualities, that channel gradually starts closing. And then eventually we may be completely closed, like the charcoal. But when we cultivate those divine qualities that we spoke about of humility and appreciation and devotion and attunement, that channel starts opening again on its own. We don't have to do anything. And then the blessings pour into our lives. So the scriptural passage for today from the Bible, St. Luke, and I have to give you a little forewarning that these two passages from the Bible and the Bhagavad Gita are a little intense. So the Bible passage from St. Luke, And it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, meaning Jesus, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go shew yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? They are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. And our Guru's commentary, I'm going to read just a short excerpt. He said, Jesus is pointing out the material nature of most people who, even when they are the beneficiaries of providential gifts, rejoice in their good fortune but remain thoughtlessly lacking in recognition of the giver. Just imagine, out of the ten lepers who were blessed with instantaneous healing of their insidious disease, by the divine power in Jesus, only one was moved to express due gratitude. Aldous Huxley, famous British author, said, Most human beings have an almost infinite capacity for taking things for granted. <laughs> It's true, isn't it? It's true. The passage from the Bhagavad Gita Chapter 3, verse 12, The devas communed with by yajna will grant thee the, gra the craved for gifts of life. He who enjoys benefactions of the universal deities without due offerings to them is indeed a thief. Ooh. 
Guru's commentary on that, again a short excerpt. He said, the human being seeking a more spiritual consciousness should not withhold a natural expression of gratitude for the possession and functioning powers of his bodily temple. For the forces that throb in his heart, circulate in his blood, speed his digestion, condition his telephonic nervous system to receive and transmit all communications among soul, body and outward world and direct the metabolic, crystallizing, assimilating, procreative and eliminative functions of his body. The ramifications of thought and will in his brain and the emotional responses of his heart. Man, identifying himself with a shallow ego, takes for granted that it is he alone who thinks, wills, feels, digests meals and keeps himself alive, never admitting through reflection, only a little would suffice, that in his ordinary life he is not but a puppet of his past actions, karma, and of nature, directed and controlled by intelligent deities. Man is thus out of touch with universal harmonies and is little better than a lawless pirate, rendering no homage to countless forces that mercifully provide for the whole of his allotted span. It's pretty harsh, but it's true, isn't it? I mean, our complex bodies, like Guruji is saying here, there's trillions of cells working together to make us who we think we are, and we think we are controlling this body. No. There is a higher divine power that is sustaining us, and we can never forget that. So how do we, how do we cultivate this spirit of thankfulness, of gratitude? There is a very beautiful article called Unceasing Thankfulness by Sri Dayamata in her book, Finding the Joy Within. And she describes three stages of development of this quality of gratitude. The first is that whenever we have cause for rejoicing, whenever anything good happens to us, our first expression of thankfulness should be to God, to the Divine. Number one. And I'll share a little personal story to illustrate this point. Many, many years ago, I was uh, living in India. I grew up there, and as a high school student, I had just finished my 12th grade examination, the board examinations. And these are very uh, important examinations in India, especially where the, the result of that examination to a large degree will determine your future career, perhaps, or at least your next educational uh, path. And so I had given this examination, waiting for the results. Uh, the week the results came out, my parents were visiting a different city, so I was staying with a, a family friend who was very kind enough to host me, he and his wife. So I was living at their home. On the day the results came out, I went to my school to pick, pick them up. And I came back home, and just as I entered the threshold of the apartment, the gentleman, my host, was sitting right there. He saw my face, and he said, don't tell me anything. Go to the puja room, where the altar is. You bow down before God, and you thank Him. Maybe just looking at my face, he, he gathered that I had done reasonably well. And so I, I followed his instructions. I went to the puja room, knelt before the altar, gave my thanks to God, came out to the living room where he was seated, and then he said, now tell me. <laughs> so that was the principle, give God the first thanks. And I've never forgotten that, what he taught me through that very simple uh, exercise. So that's point number one, give God the first thanks. Point number two is, never take things for granted in our life. And sadly, we often realize the importance or the value of things or people in our lives only after those are taken away from us. So 
So ex expressing our appreciation for our loved ones on a regular basis. Let's not take them for granted. Let's not take for granted the conveniences we have been given in our lives, perhaps for our health, for the different you know, other good things that may be in our lives that we have. And we just take them for granted. Let's not wait for those things to be taken away before we say, oh gosh, I should have expressed my appreciation to that person. So never taking things for granted. And the third point is that if we can train our minds to thank God, even in the midst of difficulties, then we will discover a hidden blessing even in our adversities. And Dayama says in that article, Though thanking Him, meaning God, in these situations may require an act of will, we demonstrate thereby our trust and automatically focus more on what is positive in that condition. Our understanding opens to the valuable lessons to be learned. Our spirits lift and faith surges within. These positive feelings release healing power and strength within and heighten our receptivity to God's transforming touch. Some years ago, I was with a, a long-time devoted disciple of Guruji's teachings. And I knew that he had been undergoing some very tough physical challenges in his life. And I was sort of expressing my sympathy to him and you know, he was very appreciative of that and I asked him, how do you, how do you cope with all the pain and you know, the challenges that go with your physical issues? And, um, and he just looked at me and he said, you know, even though it has been very tough to withstand the pain and to undergo the treatment and the, you know, figuring out all the unknowns, even in the midst of my deepest pain, I have always turned within and thanked God. Even for the pain, I said, thank you God. Because through this I am learning something. I am learning something. I am learning patience. I am learning compassion for other people's suffering. And he said, through that act of expressing appreciation, even in the midst of challenges, has allowed me to maintain to deepen my inner connectivity to the Divine, to God. And that has kept me going. I've never forgotten what he said there. Well, now science is catching up <laughs> with all these heart qualities, you know, cultivating these heart qualities. Some years ago, there was an article, a paper published in the Journal of Clinical Psychology on the five qualities that are practiced by people who are very happy. And guess what two, at least two of those five qualities are. One, be grateful. And the second quality is, count your blessings. Science is saying that now. And this paper conducted a research study where they got a bunch of people and they asked them to write letters of gratitude to all people they knew who had helped them in some way. And what they found is that there was a tremendous increase in a sense of well-being and happiness and contentment in the lives of these people who wrote these letters. For weeks, perhaps even for months, there was an increase, elevation in their um, health even, and just happiness overall in their lives. And the surprising part of the study was that they did not even need to send the letters. All they do had, had to do was write the letters, even if they did not mail it or send an email to this other person, they still experience these feelings of elevated happiness and well-being. And like I said, the second point was count your blessings. I read somewhere that they say that the hardest arithmetic to master is the one that allows you to count your blessings. Someone said, I want to say thank you to all the people who came into my life and made it outstanding. 
and all the people who walked out of my life and made it fantastic. <laughs> There's always things to be grateful for. Another scientific article that just appeared a few months ago in Inc. magazine, INC. magazine, um, spoke about four habits of the happiest people. And again, one of the habits is be grateful. Learn to be grateful. And what they studied in this research was that they asked people to write down every single day three things that they were grateful for in their life. It takes just a couple of minutes. Three things in your journal or on your phone, wherever you want to write it. And if they did that for 21 days in a row, of course, you know, those three things that you write every day should be different. You don't want to write the same three things for 21 days. But if you can identify three new things every single day for 21 days, continuously, again, they noticed feelings of elevated happiness and well-being and better health, better productivity in these people's lives. It's actually, they found that this was a very effective way to retrain our brains to be optimistic to scan for the positives in our lives rather than focus on all the things that are going wrong. And when we do that, we shift our mindsets and automatically, you know, we become optimistic, positive, and good things start happening because we start taking good actions because of our positive attitude. And if you are into apps, mobile apps, I did some research on this. There are some really cool um, <laughs> gratitude journaling apps. You know, if, uh, because some of us need a little push, right, to take action. So there are some really nice apps that prompt you with questions that give you some really nice affirmations and thoughts that, on gratitude that you can uh, reflect on and maybe encourage you to journal. So. Look those up on the App Store if you're into those sort of things. And so, to we covered a lot of ground today, a lot of ground, and I'm way over time. I apologize. Um, I just want to quickly summarize the the main points that we spoke about. We said that gratitude is a very spiritual quality. People who are deeply spiritual are grateful people. Gratitude helps us to cultivate other spiritual qualities that help us to attain our life's goal of self-realization, such as devotion, humility, appreciation, all of those things. Gratitude opens us up to receiving God's grace and blessings into our lives. There are three stages for the development of this quality. One is to always give our first thanks to God. Two, Count our blessings, never take things for granted. Three, even in the midst of difficulty, expressing our appreciation to God using our willpower. And lastly, as we discussed, science has now proven that grateful people are often the happiest. So that concludes our service. Jai Guru. Let us now take a few minutes to pray deeply for those in need, for our troubled world, for world peace and harmony. You can visualize the people that you know who are in need of physical, mental and spiritual help. And the peace that we feel today in the sacred chapel, let us radiate that to the whole world, that we as human beings can learn to live together as children of, of the One Father. In a couple of minutes we will rise and practice the healing technique taught by our Guru. So let us take some time to pray deeply right now.
please rise. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father. Thou art omnipresent. Thou art in all thy children. Manifest thy healing presence in their bodies. Let us rub our hands together, visualizing the energy collecting there. And raise our arms and chant Om. Heavenly Father, Thou art omnipresent, Thou art in all Thy children, manifest Thy healing presence in their minds. Rotate our arms rapidly around each other, visualizing a ball of energy gathering around our arms. Heavenly Father, Thou art omnipresent, Thou art in all Thy children, manifest Thy healing presence in their souls. Once more, let us send vibrations of healing, peace, love and joy throughout the world. Om. Let us have our closing prayer. Heavenly Father, Mother, Mother, Friend, friend, Beloved God, God, Jesus Christ, Christ, Bhagavan Krishna, Mahavatar Babaji, Lahiri Mahashai, Swami Sri Yukteswar, and our Guru, Paramahansa Yogananda, saints of all religions, we bow to you all. May thy love shine forever on the sanctuary of our devotion, and may we be able to awaken thy love in all hearts. Om Peace. Amen. God and Guru's blessings.